You are watching McLaren Port here on today's health program, and today I'm speaking with fellowship trained orthopedic spine surgeon Ryan Goodmanson about conditions that cause serious back pain. Dr. Goodmanson, thanks so much for speaking with us today. Thanks for having me, Kelly. I appreciate it. So when we talk about back problems, I think a good place to start maybe would be with the anatomy. You have a model that you can kind yeah, of explain sure. what what we're looking at today? So the lumbar spine specifically, this is what we're looking at right here, is a column. It's made up of bones and cartilage basically. You have bones that sit on invertebral discs uh, which are essentially the shock absorbers of your spine. Uh, it allows for motion in many different planes, flexion, extension, uh, rotation, and side bending. Um, and it houses the nerves that exit uh, your spine and go to your legs. And so for our audience, the nerves are the yellow segments? Nerves are the yellow segments. Okay, yep. very good. Um, so what common conditions usually do people come to see you for? Yeah, about 90 to 95 percent of people have back pain which is a little more muscular uh, in nature. Uh, that can be anything from a strain, sprain, uh, to any type of injury. Um, Every once in a while though, we see conditions that can cause pain uh, by compressing the nerves uh, or something called stenosis. So let's talk a little bit more, lumbar spinal stenosis. Mm -hmm. What exactly is that? It's a very common problem. It can happen. Uh, basically stenosis is uh, the narrowing of the conduit for the nerves. So anything that causes narrowing or pressure on the nerves is essentially stenosis. You can get stenosis centrally uh, in the spine, which is uh, down the central column of the spine where the nerves uh, run, or where the nerves exit, which is called foraminal stenosis. What are um, some of the common symptoms that patients will experience if they have lumbar spinal stenosis? Spinal stenosis can cause pain when it compresses the nerves. It causes pain in usually a very uh, particular distribution, which is where the nerve serves. For example, if an L5 nerve root is compressed in the foramen, a patient may experience pain that runs down the back of their leg, passes their knee, and goes into their foot. Uh, each nerve serves a different area of their leg, and so this is called radicular pain, in that the pain follows a very uh, specific distribution down uh, its pathway. So how would you diagnose a condition like that? Sure. We always start with a very thorough history and physical exam. You as well as know that people know their bodies better than I do. I'm meeting them for the first time. They've had their body for 50 years, so they know. But I always start with talking with the patient because they can tell me exactly what kind of pain they're having. From there, we will determine if they need further diagnostic tests. We usually start with x-rays. Uh, if we feel that the nerves are involved, we may order something called an MRI to look at the different uh, uh, nerves in relation to the bones and soft tissues. Um, we know that the spine is always surrounded by so many different muscles, so um, you always hear about people needing to improve their core strength and things like that. So what, are there some other non-surgical options or recommendations that you make to your patients? Definitely. We always start as most conservatively as we possibly can. Usually I will send patients to physical therapy for muscle balancing, core strengthening, and gait training. I will always send them home with a home exercise program as well as a health maintenance program because I like to treat the whole patient. So um, if those things don't work, when do patients know it's time to, for another intervention? Usually after a course of physical therapy, uh, medications, and even some injections, uh, a patient may or may not uh, have um, relief from this. If they don't and they come back and see me, it may be time to take the next step. And so when we talk about surgical options, have we come a long way? Have there been some advancements or changing changes in treatment? Definitely. Over time, uh, we have come up with different ways of treating this. Um, the age-old treatment, however, is still a decompression for the nerves. If there's pressure on the nerves, we need to take pressure off of the nerves. This can be done in several different ways. Uh, one of the ways, and we can show here, is something uh, called an interspinous spacer. And this device allows us to go in and do a decompression, but then put a device in that holds open the foramen. Uh, this allows for some stability to be maintained within the spine, but then also holds the uh, conduits open so that the nerves can flow freely. So what would expected recovery be for a, a procedure like this? 
I usually use the rule of threes, three days, three weeks, and three months. Three days after surgery, you feel a little bit down just because you had surgery. Three weeks after surgery, you're gonna be doing much better because your soft tissues will have healed and you're gonna be up and about and moving around. I usually get patients up the day of surgery and the day after surgery, so you will be walking after surgery. And after about three months, you're gonna feel like you can get back to your normal day-to-day -day routine without having any issues. Very good, this has been really good information. Do you have any other um, tips or anything that you would like to tell patients if they're experiencing back pain? Is there like don't wait too long, you know, because I think people, you know, they get a little nervous when it comes sure, to their back. Sure, sure. If they're experiencing weakness in their legs, that's progressive. If they start experiencing numbness in uh, their region between their thighs or in their buttock, or if they're experiencing bowel or bladder symptoms such as incontinence or uh, severe constipation, they should seek attention immediately. These are emergent signs. Um, other than that, the weakness and the pain will drive them to continue uh, their treatments and to come back and see us. Right, and then it starts to interfere and they can't do the things they love to do. Yes. It's time to give you a call. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Goodmanson, for sharing this information with our audience. Of course, thank you. This completes the segment of McLaren Port Huron Today's Health. If you would like to make an appointment with Dr. Goodmanson at McLaren Port Huron Advanced Orthopedics, just call the number on your screen or you can request an appointment through their website. If you would like to watch additional videos, just go to our website at www.mclaren.org forward slash PHTH. This is Kelly DiNardo from McLaren Port Huron Today's Health. Thanks for watching.